My first question to Ruth is, you adapted your first novel. How was it? Could you tell us the experience of how that all came about? Well, I wrote the novel in 1960, and in 1962, two, at that time, very young men showed up, Ismail Merchant and James Ivory, and they said, would you, uh, you know, they wanted to make a film, and they wanted me to write the screenplay uh, of The Householder, and I said, uh, I've never written a film. They said, it's okay, we never made one either. <laughs> so it's, that's how we started. So Ruth, when you wrote the novel, did you imagine it as a movie ever? Never, never, absolutely never. I had hardly seen a film because I was living in India, and all we got was sort of the scrapings of the worst Hollywood films, and, and I, I just didn't see any. So what was the first thing you did when they said we want to turn this into a movie? Well, I, I, I took the novel and I read it and, and I thought, oh, this is going to be easy. Actually, it was. <laughs> <laughs> At least, you know, I wrote the dialogue right. like it was in the book. I thought that would do fine. But afterwards, I found it didn't do well at all. You cannot take the dialogue from a book and plonk it down in your screenplay. Right. You have to do things to it. So that's where I learned of my own novel, really. Then you went on to do E.M. Forster novels. Oh, much later. Much later? Uh, yeah, much later. After that, uh, we did a film called Shakespeare Walla, which was an original, and then uh, another six originals before I came to the first adaptation, which was a Henry James novel, The Europeans, yes. in 1979. You, say ba you said basically in a quote, it's like, putting your hand in and pulling out stuff. Well, if you have good stuff, I mean, Henry James was wonderful. Right, Just right. wonderful. He's right. such marvelous scenes, wonderful characters, and, and I used to think, uh, uh, God, somebody's paying me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you also said he has marvelous characters, but from what I remember of Henry James, there's a lot of psychological insights. How do you get that Oh, well, that was a great challenge, and it's actually one of my favorite films that we did is The Golden Bowl. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. practically not yeah. a word of dialogue. It's all what everybody thinks. But there, instead of putting your hand in it, you actually have to pull out the thoughts and, right. you know, thoughts and feelings and, and put those into dialogue. That was a great challenge, and just, I loved it. He gave you so much material. I mean, he gave you the thought, he gave you the feelings, he gave you the characters, and, you know, you carried on from there. But it's a great gift that he had. And with E.M. Foster? E.M. Foster, E.M. Um, e. Foster, uh, not so rich, really. I mean, of course, he's wonderful, right. and his stories are remarkably strong. And you'd think, you know, that, that he would be just sort of this sensitive Englishman. Not at all. Remarkably strong, really. Very, very good story. But sometimes, uh, um, well, he also has a lot of moral lessons in his, uh, which you have to make implicit rather than, you know, have people say them out. Interesting, uh, yeah. But also, that, that was, it's also a great privilege with him. But sometimes he leaves things out um, uh, that you then have to put in. Like, um, well, I think that this was Howard's end, and uh, the girl gets pregnant. There's no scene at all about a person. <laughs> you don't know who it is, where right. it is in the book. You really don't know. And we had to make up a scene. Um, you know, where he, where they actually produce this baby. And uh, we put it in a boat. And uh, then when the film was made, uh, I think it was, yeah, somebody at Sony Classics or Columbia, whoever was distributing their film, they said, uh, were you influenced uh, by that scene in the Dreiser novel, you know, where he drowns the, the girl uh, in American yeah. tragedy? And we said, no, no, <laughs> we didn't have any such scene at all, because we had nothing, we didn't know. <laughs> we didn't know what happened, so well, there was certainly no influence. When you read Howard's End or Passage to India, what, what is it that 
helps you get into it? Uh, what I do is uh, I read it, I read it again, and then I put it aside. Right. And then I think, um, well, this has a certain form. I've got to find another form. I've got to find another way of telling the story. I've got to change the framework, and I've got to find this. And, uh, you know, well, I'm saying all this as if, if, as if I'm consciously doing it, but actually I'm not. Really, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really groping for something. Um, maybe the best example I can give you is uh, a screenplay I did for, uh, the, it was a combination of two novels, Mr. and Mrs. Bridge. Oh, yes, yeah, I love that, yes. And, well, th that is to the two novels are told in very short chapters, sort of vignette, vignettes. But um, I knew this wasn't going to work, so finally what came through for me is to, well, uh, this novel actually tells the lives of this uh, couple. So I thought, well, let's do it by seasons and start off with spring. And, ah. and I mean, it seemed a simple structure, but it was something you could really pour their lives into, yeah, into sure. the seasons. It wasn't something that was in the novel. Um, it was. It just I knew this to make it a film. I just had mm -hmm. to find one. Just has to find a different form. Sometimes the author, as great as they are, leaves things out. Oh, they do leave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, leaves things out. He's not going to know that you're going to make a film out of this. So, <laughs> <Right>. it, <laughs> so what he's left out is something that wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have been any good to him in the novel, but it would have been good to me in, mm -hmm. for a film. I love dialogue scenes. I just uh, maybe I should be writing plays. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't written any, but I certainly love dialogue scenes. And sometimes uh, they haven't been worked to uh, worked up to the pitch that I feel that it could reach. And maybe I can do it, and I'll try and do it. Uh, you know, work it up more so it will be more resonant, so it will be stronger. But it's usually always within the dialogue for me. Is there a craft to, like, like you have a quote, Ruth, where you say, it's not a literal, you're not literally translating the book, it's a tapestry. Is that? You said what I said? You did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you mean you pick out what you can, but it's like I said before, you pick out what you can and you make your own pattern. Or right, you know. so what was some of the things you learned? I'd, I certainly think about being uh, simpler because it's very difficult to follow otherwise. When you're on a page, you can read, uh, you take in slowly, but I don't think in the, uh, uh, on the screen you can take in as, uh, uh, as directly as you can in the, um, uh, on, I'm sorry, you take in more directly than you do in the novel. So it, your language really does have to be much simpler. Mm -hmm. You can't, uh, um, you know, well, certainly can't go into beautiful language. You can't use uh, anything that is not perfectly, I'm not even saying natural, but perfectly plausible that a character would say. In a novel, I think you can take more risks with that. But I, I wouldn't myself in a film make them say anything that is in the least flowery or in the least far-fetched or in the least something that you wouldn't say to someone that you have a relationship with. And that's what I mean by simpler, that it has to be direct and not worked up into uh, something um, that is more literary. When a novel is a novel, everybody can imagine the lead character. When you're adapting it, do you, do, you, do you try to get away from what that's there and start thinking an actor, or is that a bad thing to do? I think it's a very bad thing, bad thing to, to do. do. It stops you from doing your work, really, right. of creating the character. Oh, yeah, this is a wonderful actress. She's going to fill this character. She's going to play it. So, you know, you don't really have to bother. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's much better not to, I think. Is there anything you would like to adapt? No, not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I've been very lucky. I've always play, uh, worked only with the two people, two same people. 
They are fight all the time. <laughs> 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 you know, they are fights are kind yeah, of normal. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think I could like to do that with the studio head or anybody like that. It's, you know, when you work intimately with other pe with people and know them well and they know you well, um, well, that's an ideal situation.